Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we look at Psalm 99. Psalm 99, verse 1 through 9. It says, The Lord is king, so let the nations shake with fear. He sits as king above the cherub angels. So let the whole earth shake. The Lord in Zion is great. He is the great leader over all the people. Let all the nations praise your name. Your name is great and awesome. Your name is holy. You are the powerful king who loves justice. You have made things right. You have brought goodness and fairness to Jacob. Praise the Lord or God and bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were some of his priests. Samuel was one man who called on his name. They prayed to the Lord, and he answered them. God spoke from the tall clouds, and they obeyed his commands, and the law he gave them. Lord our God, you answered their prayers. You showed them that you are a forgiving God and that you punish people for the evil they do. Praise the Lord our God. Bow down towards his holy mountain and worship him. The Lord our God is holy. So today, as we look at Psalm 99, we see in verse 3, verse 5, and verse 9, that it tells us that God is holy. Holy, holy, holy. The king's holiness is the threefold cord that runs right through Psalm 99. Verse 3, he is holy. Verse 5, he is holy. Verse 9, he is holy. The psalmist look ahead and he sees the Messiah as already sitting upon his throne in an established kingdom. He said he was enthroned above the cherubs, the angelic beings that were there. He, the, the psalmist says the Lord is great in power and in magnificence as he rules from his throne in Zion. He is exalted. He rules over the people of the earth. So he is speaking of his millennial reign when he shall come to earth on the second advent and rule for a thousand years. So he says the people should give honor unto him. They should praise his awesome name. They should acknowledge that he is holy. So thus the king of power is also, as we see from the scripture, a lover of justice. A rare combination amongst hearts, rulers, and great men. We see here men of might. But when it comes to justice, sometimes there is unfairness. But in this kingdom, there is not going to be any graft nor corruption. Those things will not be known. All would be dear, as the scripture says, is equity, justice, and righteousness. Because the king will rule with fairness. There is no exception. So his people should extol him. They should exalt him. They should prostrate themselves before him 
and worship him. This is the king, as the scripture tells us in verse 6 and 7, who faithfully guided his people in the past. It refers to Moses and Aaron among his priests. Samuel also, who was the intercessor. These men were men who trusted God and knew that if he did something in the past, he will do it again. So he talked about Moses and Aaron who performed the priestly duties. And of course, Samuel who stood in the gap. As human beings, yes, they made mistakes. But here he says he answered them. So he communicated with Moses. He communicated with Aaron. If you could remember, he did so in the pillar of cloud when he delivered the law on Mount Sinai. They obeyed his voice, even though, as we say, sometimes they slipped up. When Samuel prayed, the Bible says the Lord heard. So God heard and he answered their prayer then. And this is saying, if he did it before, he will do it again. He is the same God. He is unchangeable. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. So what he did before, he will continue to do it now and even further. He was the God who forgives. Though he didn't overlook their evil deeds and the, the, um, their sins were forgiven. But the consequences for sin still remains. God's grace, for instance, uh, uh, forgive Moses for what he did at the waters of Meriba. But because of God's government, it kept him from entering in the promised land. So as we look at these three heroes here being presented, uh, Aaron and Moses and Samuel, we understand that God was with them and so he is with his people. He was true to them. They could have trusted him. He is the God all faithful. When he makes covenant, he does not break them. They call upon his name and he heard them. He saved them or he delivered them. So we see from this threefold reference to his holiness that they could always trust and worship a holy God. So what is he saying today? He says the Lord reigns in Zion, which is referring to Jerusalem. He has established a throne and it has justice, judgment, and righteousness, the Bible says, in Jacob. We understand that that verse is still yet unfulfilled. But the people were admonished. He says, let the people tremble. Let the hearth be moved. Let the people praise God's name. Let them exalt him. Let them bow down and worship at his feet. And the reasons were given why they should do this. The Lord God reigneth. He sits above the cherubims. He is great in Zion. For the first time, they will acknowledge his greatness. He says he is high above the people. His name is holy. He loves judgment. He establishes justice. He executes judgment and righteousness. Again, he is holy. He answers prayer. He speaks in the clouds of fire. He forgives sin. 
and he takes knowledge of what his people does and therefore today we can sing holy 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 is the lord god almighty early in the morning our songs shall rise to thee holy 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 lord god almighty god in three persons blessed trinity today he is holy let us bow before him in reverence and give him what is due unto his name holy 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 all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and the sky and the sea why because only he alone is holy today god bless you as we acknowledge his holiness thank you again for watching and may god bless the usa